Hi, I'm George Dory, and welcome to our Coast to Coast AM YouTube channel. Have fun, tell your friends, and share us with everyone. You can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Coast to Coast AM's mobile app. And always remember to log on to our website at coasttocoastam.com for daily articles, the best paranormal information, and all you need to know about your favorite guests. And now you can become a Coast Insider directly through the Coast mobile app. We welcome our international listeners and even offer a free two-week trial. So don't delay. Become an insider today. I'm George Nori. This is Coast to Coast AM. Douglas Ruskoff back with us. What do the rich know that we don't? His latest work, Survival of the Riches. Books, documentaries truly reveal the hidden agendas of our society, economy, and belief systems. Named one of the world's 10 most influential intellectuals by MIT, he is responsible for originating such concepts as viral media, social currency, digital natives. And today, Dr. Ruskoff serves as a professor of media theory and digital economics at the CUNY Queens University, where he recently founded the Laboratory for Digital Humanism and hosts its Team Human podcast. Douglas, welcome back. I was remembering how much hope we had in the late 80s and early 90s for the Internet as this way of connecting people. You know, we were talking about the Gaia hypothesis that that postulated that, you know, everything on the planet is part of one big organism. And those of us in the early Internet thought that these wires would kind of wire up humanity into a coordinated brain, that we'd finally be working together and have a collective imagination. But, you know, the, in reality, it, it's not real. You, it doesn't really connect us that way. You know, you look at the way people connect online, the kinds of it, – it, it's, it's because it's not – in real life, it's not like you're in your neighborhood. It's not like talking to your neighbors. You don't have the bandwidth. You can't make eye contact. You don't have anything in common in the real world. You know, your feet aren't on the ground with them. It's just throwing these little messages and symbols back and forth at each other. And I feel that's where we as a society are getting really untethered from the real. You know, so many people, we're, we're, we're falling into this, this, this techno trance and thinking that these imitations of life are are what matter that the you know the number of hits you got on this platform or the friends you have on that one or what someone said to you on on twitter or x or whatever it is it's like dude none of that's real <laughs> it's not it's not real and we are we are losing track you know of of what is real and it's every day just like you had there's another ai another simulation another thing that's trying to imitate what's in real life but it, but but it's not and it's really just distracting us from you know what we what we're here to do douglas are you afraid of ai you know i'm not afraid of it the way some of the tech bros are. In other words, that they're going to become alive and decide, you know, that they know better than us. But I'm afraid of the way we're applying AI. I'm afraid of of people and companies and governments and, and anti-governments using AI to confuse people, to anger people, to make people panic for a moment. Oh, there's, you know, there's a riot going on. There's someone threatening you or there's this is happening. And, and even if you know later, even if you figure out an hour or a day or a week later that it's not true, and I'm not convinced that most people will, you know, you, you hear something, it sounds reasonable, and then you're, you know, you're, 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 looking for the basement in a pizzeria before very long. And I understand why, because it sounds so real. But even if you get it, it's still, it still, it made you uneasy for that day or that week. And we're going to be, I feel like there's, there's going to be a lot of use of AI for disinformation, misinformation, and really just kind of cognitive, mental, social abuse that will make us more and more suspicious of each other, less and less, um, less and less social. And in, I guess the worst case is uh, more willing to want to engage with AIs than, uh, than other people. It's not going to stop, though, Douglas, is it? I don't think it's going to stop. You know, it's not. But we do see signs of, of resistance in our culture. You know, we see, I mean, gosh, all the way in, in China, they have the, the laying down movement where people are just dropping out. They're lying down saying, I'm not going to take this anymore. Uh, but and, and here, I think a lot of people are realizing, you know, that the tech 
companies, for the most part, they don't have our best interests at heart. And I think people are, they have a one real world experience now and they're kind of shocked like oh wow i just watched my daughter play softball in a little league game and that felt so much better than anything you know i'm putting down my ipad i'm going to stop photographing her and actually look at her i'm going to enjoy this moment i feel like people are now partly because this stuff is so pervasive i think they are starting to wake up the title of your book survival of the riches about tech billionaires tell me about that well, it, it's strange, you know, I mean, I'm some kind of, you know, tech and society expert, so I get called in for lots of things. I've been right about a ton of stuff. I'm not in business, but, you know, I, I, I got my ear to the tracks and know the future in some ways. So I get invited to do these talks, usually kind of about the future of technology, the future of digital business. And I thought I was getting invited to another one of those, and I don't even like doing them, but they offered so much money that I, I agreed, and they flew me out business class to this, this resort way, way, way out in the desert. It was so far that my plane was like, it was like a two or three hours drive from my airport to this resort, but the resort had this like landing strip next to it where the guys are landing in their G5s and all. So it was a, a, a an exclusive kind of event, and I really prepared because I wanted to tell them what was wrong with the tech industry and what they're doing and all, and I'm waiting in the green room to go on to do the talk, and you know, I'm waiting for the guy. You know how they come out with the, usually with the little clip-on microphone and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, five guys come in in the in these like Patagonia kind of uh, fleece shirts, and they sit around the table where I'm getting ready, and that's my audience. It's just five tech billionaires. Well, a couple of you know tech investors, but basically five tech billionaires who are peppering me with these really kind of yes or no binary questions. They don't want to hear my talk. They're like, first, they're like, you know, what should we invest in, virtual reality or augmented reality or, you know, Bitcoin or Ethereum? And I'm not the guy to ask that, right? I, I would have said Betamax, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. I knew, I'm right, but I'm wrong, right? I'm right in the idea, but I, I, don't, I don't pick the right business, uh, which is fine. But then, you know, so they're going back and forth with all these questions. And finally, one of them says, uh, Alaska or New Zealand? And I'm like, what? And he's like, what's the better place for a bunker given, you know, climate change and uh, uh, pandemics, uh, uh, possible nuclear problems, economic unrest, uh, refugee crisis? What's the safer place, safer bet overall? And they, they, they wanted advice about their bunkers, right, about their survival strategies. They were all preparing for what they called the event, right, the electromagnetic pulse or nuclear war or climate change that renders the earth unlivable and forces them to retreat either into a, a, a bunker or to upload their consciousness to the cloud or to go, you know, seasteading out in the ocean or to get to Mars or to become an AI. And I'm like, oh, my God, really? You know, so I entered entertained their idea for a while. I half thought they were joking. And one of them pulled out plans for his, his, his bunker that he was building. And I'm looking, there's like a, a, a heated pool under the ground, they, these shipping containers he's going to put under the ground. And I'm, I, I say, uh, uh, you know, my neighbor's got a heated pool and there's a truck out there all the time. You know, all the parts keep going. How are you going to make new parts for your heated pool in the apocalypse? And he opens his little moleskin book and he writes, oh, you know, parts for the pool. It's like, like he hadn't thought of it. And finally, I was asking them, how are you, if you've got these bunkers and the rest of us don't, how are you going to protect yourself from the rest of us? And one of them said, oh, well, you know, I've hired, you know, a dozen Navy SEALs to come out and protect the, the, the facility, you know, in the, in the event of a crisis. They're like waiting, you know, they've got, you know, fully fueled helicopters and they'll be there in an instant. And I'm like, all right, so you've got Navy SEALs in your apocalypse bunker compound, you know, and how exactly are you going to pay your Navy SEALs to protect you once your money is worthless? And they blow their jaws drop. Like, these are the smartest guys in the world. They hadn't even thought of this. I'm like, yeah, your Bitcoin, you know, your crypto is not going to be worth anything if society collapses. Why aren't they just going to take over the whole place from you? And then they spend the whole 
next hour, they're just debating what could they do to maintain control of their security force. So one of them says, well, you know, what if I'm the only guy that knows the combination to the lock where we keep the food? It's like, oh, well, Navy SEALs don't have any experience getting information out of people, right? You can just spend the entire And are these billionaires, Douglas, thinking long-term or short-term? Well, it's odd. On the one hand, they're thinking long-term, right? Because they think they're thinking out beyond the repercussions of their technologies. They know they've screwed it up. They know their technologies are making people crazy. You know, they, they know where their, their resources, they, they, they understand, or they understand uh, uh, that there's a great probability of bad stuff happening. You know, the nation states are weird. They're, so they, 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 they're thinking long, longer term than most of us in that they're looking ahead you know, 10, 20 years to what they think is going to be the collapse, but they're not thinking genuinely long-term. If you talk to any true self-respecting prepper, what's the first thing they're going to say is get your neighbors prepared, right? You don't want to be a lone prepper. The first thing that any self-respecting prepper does is make sure every neighbor on his block has food and water and protection So because we're going to need- So they don't attack them. Right. You're going to come like that Twilight Zone. You know, That's where right. The, 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 the shelter. Remember that? Right. The shelter. Exactly. It's like, haven't they watched that? But they, they think, and this is their, their hubris, right? They're tech bros. They're billionaires. They think they can go it alone. They think that they're going to be the one, you know, to get to Mars and have a dome. They're going to be the one who has, you know, Mark Zuckerberg's got his place in Hawaii. Peter Thiel has his in New Zealand. You know, that somehow they're going to keep the rest of us out or whatever it is that they're afraid of. Somehow they're going to think their way out of it. They've got, you know, the, the techno, technology logical solution. But, you know, for me, what it revealed was these guys, this, this, this tech bro mentality where they think they can earn enough money to insulate themselves from the reality they're creating by earning money in that way, right? Like they can make a car that goes fast enough to escape from its own exhaust. And it just doesn't work like that. You know, and do they think of the ramifications of what happens afterwards? Part. You know, I don't think they really do. They think they're going to somehow sort of wait it out. You know, that they'll wait out 50 years or 100 years. I don't, think, I don't think any of them are really thinking that they're going to get into their shelter and live there forever, that that's the new civilization. Who wants to? You know, well, I think a lot of them want to. A lot of there's a there's a whole movement, you know, their their version of long termism, or what they call you know effective altruism and effective acceleration. They have all these names for it. It's it's really a version of transhumanism, but a very dark one, where they think that that all of us regular people, regular squishy pink and brown human beings on the planet, we're like the larval stage, you know, like the maggot stage of a fly, and that they are the ones who are actually going to get to the next phase of human evolution. They're going to get, you know, whatever those virtual wings are that let them upload their consciousness into the cloud and live on a computer on a satellite or, you know, spawn as robots when they get to another planet, that somehow that they're going to, to transcend this human existence and become post-human or transhuman. And when they look at the problems on the planet, when they look at whether it's, you know, climate or pollution or economics or social unrest, they think these are the signs that it's time for them to make their break, to get to the next place. And they just talk about the positive parts of their technology. You got to do it. We all got to get this stuff. We all got to go get online, do this, do that, and build the AI. And that's really their plan is not for these, these technologies to serve us. These technologies are for them to get away from us. All of their plans, really, they leave us behind. What are they concerned about, Douglas? Why do they think something drastic could happen? I mean, I guess they look at, you know, they look at the uh, climate maps put out by the, the, you know, the World Bank, and they say, oh, look, you know, it's going to raise another 20, 30 degrees or whatever. The only places you're going to move north. I was talking to some guys who's starting a hedge fund where they're selling land in Siberia and very northern Canada is the main thing. That's they think is the only place. 
We used to joke about it. My grandfather used to joke about selling water. He goes, Doug, this was, you know, the 60s. Doug, if you could figure out a way to sell water to people, you're going to be a millionaire, right? Because we just got it out of the tap. Nobody got it out of the bottle. <laughs> That's it. But now it's, you know, sell, sell out of what? Life to the people. But they're also, you know, part of it is that they're afraid, right? They're afraid of people. They've been afraid of people for these, these kind of guys. They've been afraid of people for a thousand years. You know, this was the invention of, of empirical science. While it's great to learn cause and effect, repeatable science and hypotheses and all that, when Francis Bacon, really, the, the father of empirical science in the, in the you know, 1500s, when he was arguing for it, he said it's going to let us take nature by the forelock, hold her down, and submit her to our will. Right? That is their idea, that they have a, a, a fantasy of, of control. Nature is like this woman, this scary woman that they have to control with their logic and their technology because they, they're afraid of real life. The other thing is they don't really believe that we have souls. They don't really believe they're, – they're so staunchly – well, they, they, if we did, they wouldn't believe it. They really think that we're just genes, you know, that we're just genetics following our program. And so that's all they want to do is be the program that gets, you know, that gets copied. You know, that, you know Elon Musk has children all over the place. It's, it's to get their DNA out and, and, and to move their DNA to the next place. They don't really think there's anything going on on here They're, they they get their pleasure kind of by being uh, by thinking of themselves as dictators even uh, 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 mark zuckerberg the head of uh, facebook his fantasy is that he's augustus caesar that's his thing i mean that's when he when he went on his honeymoon all he wanted to learn about was augustus caesar Jeez. and i'm i'm glad it's not caligula but it's yeah a Roman dictator. <laughs> it's still this idea of total control kind of gives them a, a feeling of pleasure. They look at our world like a video game, and they want to be the ones they, they want to be the ones playing it from above. How do they look at us, Douglas? I mean, they look at us as sad, superstitious, um, little stupid people. They look at most of humanity like kind of like the iron shavings that are you know, moving back and forth between magnets. Like, they're the magnets. They're the Avengers. They're the superheroes. They see themselves like Greek gods. They even, they're even building a city. You know, they want to build a city outside San Francisco, a perfect, you know, uh, renewable, perfect, high-tech city. They've got another one they want to build down in Saudi Arabia called Neom. You know, and these are like their, their sort of man-made Olympus they want to build for themselves to go be superheroes. You, you see Elon Musk and, and Mark Zuckerberg arguing on, on the net, challenging each other to a cage match, right? Yeah. It's nuts. Right, but they see themselves as the, the ubermensch, is what, is what the philosophers would call it, the superman. And us mere mortals, we're mortal. We're going to die. You know, we're just people. You know, we've got our religion and maybe our wives and our kids and whatever, but they see themselves as, you know, the, the techno gods, the heroes who will somehow, one way or another, live forever. That's their goal. That's why, you know, there's, there's a guy at, at Google, Ray Kurzweil, smarter than us, right? He's a smart guy. He believes that he, before he dies, is going to upload his mind to the computer. You know, that's what, what um, the, the, the kid at uh, OpenAI, uh, Sam Altman, he believes he's going to be able to upload his consciousness. That's the goal. They want to live forever because... Cry if, cryogenics. Yeah, biogenics. And, and some of these things are interesting. I remember, you know, Timothy Leary wanted to originally freeze himself so he could reanimate. And then shortly before he died, I was actually there. The guys came with the clipboards to take the measurements and get all the specifics because he was going to die soon. And then as soon as they left the house, he was like, cancel this right away. I don't want to wake up and see a bunch of guys like that. <laughs> That's what life would be. Yeah. Yep, it's a different kind of a life. They 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 don't like the messiness of our world. They like you know they like auto tuning. You know how people can you can auto tune a singer so they hit exactly the right note. You know with with computers afterwards. And I guess for certain kinds of commercial music that's okay. But imagine if you auto tuned Tina Turner 
or auto-tune James Brown. You know, what makes Tina Tina and, and James Brown James Brown, it's the way that they reach up to the note, not hitting the note. It's the reach. It's the reaching to the note or oh, coming they're, down. They're going to do it with Elvis Presley. Or Elvis Presley, exactly. It's that. You don't auto-tune that. When you auto-tune that, you are quite literally taking the soul out of the music, the humanity out of the music in order to get that perfect kind of, you know, one, zero, binary, digital, clean thing that has no nature, no noise, none of the stuff that the normal people like you or I would say, What that's what makes life worth living. If it were up to you, Douglas, and you had the right to push artificial intelligence forward or stop it, what would you do? I would slow it down. If I really could, I would slow it down and require that every AI company has on staff an ethicist, a priest, a rabbi, an imam, you know, a, a Native American, you know, people who understand humanity. That's why I called the thing I do at, at the college I'm at the, you know, the, the laboratory for digital humanism. You know, let's, if we're going to use digital technology, we have to center the humans rather than try to correct for humans or worse, transcend the human, to get away from the humans. It doesn't work. It's in the Bible. It's Babel. You know, it's the oldest story. You stop. You can't do it. The 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 real the the party's going on down here. The party's you know right on this right on this planet. You know, we, you don't you don't need to get off it, and you certainly um, don't want to make this a place where you have to get off the planet. Uh, you know, before it's too late. Douglas Rushkoff, our guest. His latest book is called Survival of the Richest. The subtitle: Escape Fantasies of the Tech Billionaires where they want to go, where they want to hide in case the end is almost near. His website is his name, Ruskoff.com, linked up at coasttocoastam.com. These rich and famous, are they going to do it or not? Well, you mean get off? Get off the planet and escape the rest of us? No. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't think so. I don't think they have time. Uh, you know, I, Betty, I think they've, they, I feel like they're, they're the first ones who are going to go. You know, they're, they're really, they've been for a long time in a kind of a, a desperate struggle to control human behavior one way or another. They kind of took the, the, the vibe of the television era where, you know, we used advertising to get people to consume more and all. And, you know, it, it, it wasn't great, but it, it didn't make us go crazy. We just became, you know, American consumers, maybe a little, a little materialist. But, you know, they, they really looked at social media as a way to control human behavior, to, to create, and they really thought they could, you know, good customers, compliant employees, get us all competing for likes or whatever it was. And when that didn't work, I think they started to look, you know, if we can't turn all these people into the workers we need, let's just replace them with AIs. And I think that's kind of their plan now. That, that rather than trying to, you know, enslave humanity or get us to, to keep believing that, that kind of BS jobs matter um, and that, that, uh, that we're satisfied doing it, they're, they're going to find AIs and robots to be kind of the ideal, uh, the, the ideal servants for them. I, I, look at, I look at social media kind of like the missionaries that the, the, the kings and queens sent to, uh, you know, to the Americas to you know, befriend the people and you know, learn about them and send all sorts of intelligence about the ways of indigenous people back to the crown. And then the next wave, you know, it's no, social media was like the missionaries. I feel like AI are like the conquistadors who come in after that. It's like, okay, we've, we've softened them up. We've learned about them. Now the AIs can come in and use everything they know about human behavior, about how we think, about, about how to sensationalize something, how to get us mad, how to freeze us, how to get us hating each other, you know, uh, unable to look up at whatever's actually attacking us, uh, you know, to turn us against each other. You know, I think that's sort of the, 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 the dangerous mission of, of these AIs. And, um, uh, n and no, 
I don't think it will work. I think too many people are waking up to it, not always in the healthiest ways. You know, we got, we've got a lot of uh, different kinds of activists on both sure. sides who are kind of in a state of panic and doing some kind of extreme things. But I think eventually people are going to start to realize, oh, those folks on the other side aren't the enemy at all. It's the people who are making us think those people are on the other side, the people who are trying to divide humanity into a right and left or an up and down. Those are the problem because really all humans, we're all on the same side here. You know, we all do better when everyone does better. It sure is. Douglas, stay in touch with us, my friend. Thank you so much. I'm George Norrie, somewhere out there on Coast to Coast AM. We'll see you on our next edition. Until then, be safe, everyone. The Coast Mobile app is now available for download on iPhones and Android devices. You can become an insider directly through this app. This is a great option for our international listeners, and new users will also receive a free two-week trial.